As of early this morning, I spoke to a staff member who said there still hasn't been any communication from the top down, and that is not atypical, I'm told. So there's certainly some frustration. How this is all going to play out when they do get back together next week is obviously going to be interesting. But I'm also told, look, this is Jim Harbaugh. He is a quirky guy. And when he gets back, he's going to focus on the task at hand. And that's just how he operates. So they're all expecting that to be quite the norm as well. And they're not coming back until mid next week as a staff. Of, of course, that could change. But that's the plan as of this morning. Heather Dinich, ESPN. That was Dinich this morning. We're ready to go here on the Amazing Blue Review Afternoon Live. Jim Scarcelli, Dennis Fithian, and Scar. Uh, we need to jump right into it. Uh, it's been a very eventful 24 hours, if not week or month here, but it ends with uh, the return of Jim Harbaugh for the upcoming season. I tell you, D, you got me fired up, ready to get on the dance floor with that that intro music there, man. I'm ready to break out some of the old moves, man. But a, a lot of fired up uh, uh, former Wolverines. You know, we were texting the heck out of each other yesterday. You know, current Wolverines, future Wolverines are fired up because uh, we got our we got the right guy. The thing is, we don't really know all of the facts that went into this whole deal, this whole, uh, you know, soap opera, you know, are we ever going to know the truth? What, you know, what, what is it? What was the deal? Was it, um, you know, does Jim really, did he always want to coach pro football? Is it, uh, was it the money at Michigan? Was it uh, the, the NIL stuff? Is it the transfer difficulties that Michigan faces compared to Ohio State? In Michigan State, you know, was he upset about last year, the, 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 maybe the cut in pay that he took? Um, or is it just that he – we just don't know. And I wish we could get some answers, man. And, uh, you know, that's that's where we're at, Denny. Well, maybe it's all of those things, Scar. And, you know, you go in there and, and Jim Harbaugh wanted to listen and, you know, he maybe he thought that he had a, a verbal agreement. You know, when, when you're talking about millions of dollars and – you know, thinking that you have a verbal agreement, I don't know what was said. If I'd have, you know, been on the line with him coming in for an interview, I know that previously, you know, he was on a Zoom, uh, kind of like we are now. There were also uh, two other guys that uh, had interviewed, you know, there one the day before. I, it was quite a marathon interview, like eight or nine hours. I've I've been in a, you know, maybe a, a twenty minute, half hour interview, maybe an hour, but never, never a nine hour uh, interview. So, uh, you know what, it was, it's been a very stressful couple uh, days, uh, certainly days, maybe weeks for Michigan fans here, you know, somewhat like a, a soap opera. But, I don't know, did he turn down the job? I don't I don't know. Like, you know what, I, I, I think that he thought that, uh, you know, that he had the job. But, you know, sometimes you go into there to the interview and you could easily, you know, paint a picture here, Scar, where we're sitting around and Jim, you know, is talking and he's like, hey, uh, what about this? You know, we didn't really talk about this. What about this? And then the Vikings are going to be like, you know what? We, you know, and you, you, you meet face to face and you walk around, you start talking about things. Sometimes it's just not a fit there. So, you know, at, at what point, you know, did the, you know, the Vikings guys start elbowing themselves and saying, hey, you know what? We're wanting to move on. Or maybe it was Jim Harbaugh saying, look, this just isn't a, you know, the, uh, the way it's going to go here. But, uh, you know, when you, you compare the resumes to the other candidates and that you know that the general manager worked with, uh, with, with Harbaugh in San Francisco, it looked like it was Jim Harbaugh's uh, uh, job to lose. Yeah. We know yeah, that. Yeah, you know, i tell you another thing, Denny. You know, I got a buddy that sells cars. I said, sometimes you got to walk out of the car dealership with your last offer. You know, and it, who knows? Maybe Jim was playing high stakes poker and saying, okay, Ward, Michigan, whatever, you know, I, I see what you're offering me to, 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 you know, with the nil, with the transfer, you know, with some of these issues, we want we need to compete with my salary, coach's salary. I, we don't know. And maybe Jim said, OK, maybe and, and maybe he got a text message, a phone call while he was in Minnesota from Ward. Hey, we're going to do this. We don't know. You know, did, did, did Michigan change its stance on something? And, and you know I, what, Scar, it, it's easy if you got a car that's running nice and, and beautiful walking in that used car lot, you know, kicking the tires, being like, you know, I don't really like that one. You know, this is what I'll take. 
you know, how about you give me that extended warranty? You can start asking for anything you want. You got it. It's not like you were desperate. Harbaugh was not in a desperate situation. I mean, he had a job where, uh, and, and it, that was pretty obvious, you know, that he could have just picked up the phone saying, I'm coming back. I'm coming home. And, you know, in the end, it looked like he did that. What happened in those meetings uh, during that day long interview out there in Minneapolis in the land of 10,000 lakes, you know, I, I don't know if it matters. What about it being a terrible look? There's people, you know, e- even mi- some Michigan fans with the soap operas like, oh man, national signing day. And, and, uh, you know, you see a lot of people lambasting. Uh, Harbaugh nationally because it was on National Signing Day. What do you think about that? Listen, Jim Jim knows what he was up against. He knows how important that was. And he knows, uh, you know, he went through the Texas A&M thing. Or maybe he maybe he was, that was when he was uh, coming in as a freshman. I went through it. You know, and he understands what he was doing to his assistant coaches and, and players and, you know, and the, the, we probably we may have lost out on a couple of recruits. He understands it, but th- that's why we have to weigh it against questions we just don't have answers for. I don't know. Was he, you know, was he upset with, uh, you know, is he not getting uh, the, the maybe uh, the kind of uh, uh, love maybe he wants from our, our leadership? I don't know. But I, I'm thinking, listen, Jim. It's all about your players and your coaches. The hell with everybody else. You know, just if, if you really want to be at Michigan, don't worry about what other people uh, maybe in, in the administration are doing or not doing. I, I just don't know, man. There's just so many questions. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy that he, 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 he said, hey, it's about – I'm about caring about kids. I'm about uh, changing lives, about winning championships, and, uh, you know, I committed to these kids. And I, and I went on here a while back and said the Jim Harbaugh I know – you know, would never leave 25 kids. And, uh, you know, it, it played out like that. And uh, maybe one day when he writes a book, 10, 20 years from now, we'll get the, the real, real truth. You know, when you go back to last year and things didn't work out, uh, you know, they had the, the miserable season, COVID or not, you know, the the two wins. Uh, he, he didn't look like, feel like the same coach. And, I, you know, I, myself, I, I think, uh, you know, when he talked to Ward Manuel and they were, and and they waited to this point, you know, he didn't want to go into the, to the, you know, this season being a lame duck. So they, they waited to that point, then COVID hit, then they had the miserable season. So, you know, then, you know, Ward was in a, a, a position to say, you know what, Jim, we're, uh, we're not just rolling this out, you know, and go ahead and see if you can go get an NFL job. And, you know, last year, nobody was calling him, you know, for, for an NFL job. So this time around, you know, I, I, I believe that he was interested in seeing, what these NFL teams uh, were going to offer. But, you know, the whole thing about it being a terrible look, I thought last year, you know, I think the, a lot of things that I see people saying, you know, this year that, oh, he was holding Michigan hostage. You know, last year it really felt like both Ward and Jim were putting themselves in money in front of Michigan football. I mean, that was the appearance to me. And they had the early signing period last year where this was going on, where there was uncertainty. And, you know, Michigan did fine. I thought, oh, this is going to be a disaster. You know, there's going to be hell to pay in recruiting. And there wasn't, you know, JJ McCarthy signed up. You know, JJ McCarthy, you know, he was out there telling people, don't worry about it, man. I, I'm running this thing. And then, you know, this year the class was already signed. I mean, yesterday there wasn't, I mean, there was a, the kid, Andrew Paul that we talked about from Dallas, but it looked like he was earmarked for Georgia or, you know, maybe Clemson, you know, Michigan seemed like they were, you know, came in third after they were hopeful for him. So that was the one guy uh, we'll get to uh, the big tackle out of Seattle and what he's doing. It doesn't seem like it affected him yesterday. So, you know, it, whether it's a terrible look, he said, well, teams are going to use it against Michigan. Like, well, now, you know, he, he's coming back. I, I, I don't like you say, like, you know, this drama could play out again. Well, yeah, I mean, like uh, having it play out again, like next year when he did say yesterday, at least uh, you, you see the uh, – the, um, a message, uh, the tweet from Adam Schefter saying that, you know, he said, Hey, you know, this is it. No, he did say, this is it. So, uh, you know, the, the whole part about it being a terrible look. All right. Yeah, all right. It, it was a terrible look yesterday, but he, he's back. It didn't hurt recruiting. Uh, I don't know if he turned down the job. I don't know if they, uh, they just didn't see eye to eye there. And then, you know, Jim was expecting like, you know what? And, and if Jim would have asked me, I'd have said, yeah, you know what, Jim, you're the candidate to be, 
look at those other guys. Those guys' resumes don't come up even close to, you know. So I'd have walked in there pretty cocky, too, especially with a, a head coaching job, you know, in my back pocket. I'd have just walked in there and said, yeah, I want this and this and this. And you know what? Uh, you guys are going to fall in line. Maybe he did that, you know. He had the track record in the NFL where, where people said he was hard to work with. So I, I don't know how much he went in there to try to ease those concerns. Maybe he just thought he was going to be himself. And in the end, they're like, we don't want this. So, you know. yeah, we, yeah, we, we don't know how that interview went. Uh, you know, I, I would have we would have all assumed that that darn thing would have been hammered out and, and flying out there would have been nothing but uh, uh, shaking a few hands, you know, because understanding the, you know, the. the everything we talked about with the recruiting and the uh, all, everything else is going on. So yeah, we, we just don't know Denny, but uh, yeah, people will probably continually try to use that against Michigan that, you know, your coach is always taking a peek, always taking a peek. That's, it's just, it's reality, but it, it gets back to why you gotta, you know, you gotta pick a school and a program, but uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, maybe one day we'll get the answer, man. But uh you know, getting getting some things like, you know, we all had these great hopes. And, you know, when Jim got hired and and we had all this optimism that, you know, it would it would this thing would happen a lot sooner. But it it took a little longer, but it happened. And, and you know, Danny, I was just looking at so people get an understanding of, of, of some of the why it was more difficult, in my opinion. The time Jim Harbaugh took the job opposed to other head coaches that Michigan had. You know, when, when Bo took the job, he, you know, Ohio State was number one, but Michigan State was was down. And then, he, you know, Bo wins that game and he gets his program rolling. You know, when Gary Moeller got the job from Bo, <coughs> Ohio State was kind of average. You know, typical Ohio State. Michigan State was decent. Coach Mo took it to another level. You know, Michigan was loaded. We had players. Bo left it great for him. You know, and, and Lloyd got it in great shape from, uh, from Mo. Uh, Ohio State was uh, we got we had John Cooper's number. Michigan State was very average going through coaches. You know, R Rich Rod got it at actually a pretty good time, um, and you know destroyed it. Bill Martin and him kind of destroyed it, in my opinion. Um, you know, and then Brady got it in even probably worse shape. But now Jim got it where Michigan State, their program was at the top of where they've probably been in fifty years. Ohio State's program had been at the top, uh, you know, 15, 20 years of top recruiting classes. So our biggest rivals, when Jim Harbaugh got the job, were at the top of where they had been in about 50 years. I just think people need to understand that, why it's, you know, I think his task may have been a little more difficult. Yeah, it's Michigan. You know, yeah, we should be able to recruit and, and do all these things. But Michigan State's program under D'Antonio, when Jim took over, Ohio State, you know, with uh, with Trestle and Urban Meyer, that thing was just a machine, and they still haven't made mistakes up in up in Columbus so much. But um, you know, Jim had he he, he we're, 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 he's finding a way where we can he, we're finally there where maybe we can start uh, sharing uh, uh, you know rotating wins versus the Buckeyes if we get our program there the way it was under the Schembechler molar car years where we kind of, you know, win 50% of those deals and kind of get back to where we're beating Michigan state, you know, 75, 80% of the time, like we did under those Schembechler molar car years. Uh, that's what I I'd like to see us get back to, but I understand the difficulties he faced, but I'm totally confident that our train is up and rolling. Michigan is, is definitely on the track to get back to where, we were in that 40 year period. Yeah. Well, look at some of the feedback here. That's some, some good stuff. I'll talk about how the landscape has uh, changed. I think people understand, you know, most of that thing here, here's a uh, receipt. saying what you guys should be talking about, how Harbaugh and company are going to be able to get more than their sh uh, fair share of five-star players. Now let's solve that code. That's from a uh, super receipt in Metro Detroit. And you know, the, you can make a case that the, a recruiting field has uh, leveled a little bit with uh, name, image, and likeness. But, you know, how far Michigan is going in there? Are they with everyone else uh, when it comes to, you know, paying okay. the players? You know, Nick Saban had a lot to say. I, I don't know if you saw that. You know, he was in Mobile yesterday saying, you know, this is all different. Now, 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 now teams are, you know, paying for their players. Well, you know what, Nick? You know, you're 
paying your uh, your quarterback a million dollars. And uh, I don't know how many people believe I like I like Nick Saban and everything else. And I, I do think the you know, everybody's cheating and Michigan's not. And, you know, that's been the biggest reason, you know, that Michigan's been in their predicament. I think that's overplayed a little bit. And anyways, I, I you know, there's no excuses when it comes down to football. But when I hear Nick Saban over there making it sound like, oh, yeah, everything's different now because teams are out there paying uh, players. We never did that. And, I, you know, I don't believe that. I, I think there is a system. Yeah, he might not be in himself, but I think that there are uh, some others. Scar, answer this one from uh, well, you know, Danny, let me Let me address that five-star. I, I think it's, hey, listen, when I, when I was getting recruited and prior to this nil stuff, it's about, you know, a great, great education. A lot of guys care about which degree do they have at that school. You know, play on television. Comfortable with your uh, with your players, you know? Do they have a good cha- a team that can win a championship? Maybe go to bowl. Those things. But now we've got this this uh, you know the nil stuff in the you know how do we get the five star kid? Well, you, it helps with winning. You know, you can only talk so much. You can only recruit so much and and sell your product so much. You've got to prove it on the field too. So that's why that win was so huge in that this this championship team we had this past year, it was huge, and saying, look, Michigan can beat Ohio State. We can beat them, and we can get to that playoff game. So you got to have a combination. You got to have the great education. We got to be able to compete with the nil stuff, and, and and we should be able to be slightly better than average with all the the wealthy alum that Michigan has that are ready, willing, and able to help. So we got to be better than uh, than the enemy on the nil. We got to be better helping our players get, our, our players get jobs outside of college when they do graduate. Ohio State does a great job of that, Danny. I don't know if we talked about that, but all those little things matter. You got to have a, a, a network to help your guys get jobs, be able to get guys in the NFL, have your nil stuff, have a great education, be able to compete on the field, put guys in pro. I mean, that's a lot of stuff, and and all those things matter. And we got to be right there at the top so we can go – so our coaches can go te- head-to-head with Texas A&M and everything they're throwing out and Alabama and Ohio State. You want to beat these guys, we just got beat by Georgia. And if you want to be able to compete with Georgia, you saw the athletes they have. you got to be hitting it on all cylinders with all those things I talked about. Our nil has got to be better than Georgia. You got it. Jimbo Fisher uh, disputed all of the, you know, that the Texas A and M's throwing. A, they got the great recruiting class, and we're we're pulling in five stars left and right. Uh, Jason uh, on the feedback here, Mason Blue Review. You want to leave some feedback? Leave the comments. We put them up on the screen. We read them. Uh, we'll give you our, our our thoughts on what you have to say. Jason saying, "How ironic that Harbaugh commits to Michigan on National Signing Day." I hope Michigan gets in line and approves the NIL advances like Texas A&M who did have the number one recruiting class. How about this coming in? Uh, this from Big T uh, down river who sent me a text. Uh, he says uh, yesterday, this is uh, he said it was a nine hour, nine hour interview with the Vikings and that they filmed the interview. They wanted to use the clips for the video when they announced his hiring. And, and he said uh, he hears that Michigan players and families reached out to the coach. Uh, maybe while he was there, I don't know. While he was- I, yeah, I believe it. Trust me. I, 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 I'm, I, that could have happened, man, big time. Because you know, listen, I, I, you know, Jim and I, we, you know, we played cop, we played together, and I, and, and guys that played sports, you have that, you, you understand how important, uh, you know, you, it, look, it's your parents and it's your coaches, man, that really develop you as a person. And Jim had that, he had people at Michigan that really influenced him. You know, he was really, really close with Coach Hanlon. I. Jim Harbaugh will talk about Jim Han- uh, Jerry Hanlon, you know, forever. The guy was influential in his life. So he, he it's the same kind of thing, you know, pass it forward, man. You know, that's the old Woody Hayes line. Um, pay it forward, you know, and, and that's a big part of what he is. So that's, that is a great, uh, that is a great take, Denny, that maybe those parents were blowing up his phone who, who uh, he sat in them living rooms for the last, you know, two, three, four years and, and those kids were like, man, coach, we want, you know, and, and maybe that did tug on them. We don't know. But maybe Jim will answer it. But I could totally believe that that that's a good take uh, from from that guy there. And um, that, that, that asked that question, because I guarantee you, when he was sitting there for those nine hours, that phone was getting blown up by a lot of people. And if he chose to look at it, he was probably influenced. 
Yeah, well, for me, like if you're just tuning in here and watching this, uh, with Harbaugh being back, you know, I was looking at different candidates and going through them and, and saying, look, yeah, I don't think that Michigan was going to be able to get Pat Fitzgerald from Northwestern. I don't think they were going to be able to get Luke Fickle. I think those were the, you know, top two guys that they should have tried to, uh, you know, pry away. But you know what? The best coach for Michigan right now is Jim Harbaugh, and they got the result. Uh, even if you didn't like that, you know, the, the drama and the soap opera and all of that, you know, he's got a top 10 recruiting class. Uh, I, I don't know if he's uh, unlocked, you know, beating Ohio State and, and winning the Big Ten. But, you know, being able to get there is a big deal. Like, you know, if we were sitting here and they had not beaten, you know, taken down Michigan State, they had not got to the college football playoff. I wouldn't be sitting here feeling as great, you know, uh, you know, or as good as I do right now about telling people that, you know, the the, the best case scenario uh, has played out in the end that, you know, Michigan has been able to get Jim Harbaugh and he's coming back. And you know what? I, I don't know if he's coming back with a tail between his legs and, or, you know, however it worked out there, but, you know, knowing him and how he compart uh, is able to, uh, you know, put things into the compartments here that I think when he comes back, you know, it's going to be full steam ahead on Michigan and he's going to get after it. And I think when it comes to the recruiting, when it comes to the name, image, and likeness, and when it also comes to the transfer portal where you have to try to get, uh, you know, uh, credits to transfer. I mean, these are going to be some of the big challenges, especially that last one there. But, uh, you know, Michigan's got the best guy for the job here. I don't know. You, you can dispute that. I know there's other people that, you know, that, um, you know, are talking about the terrible look and, you know, talking about his record against Michigan State or his bowl record or his overall record against Ohio State and what's so great. But, you know what, um, you know, this last season and, you know, knowing what kind of coach he is, I think, you know, if I could have handpicked what could have happened here, uh, I would be sitting here today wanting Jim Harbaugh to be Michigan's head coach. I think that's the yeah. best result for the Wolves. You know, Jim Harbaugh will be fired up with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. We've heard that line before, right? This, this I, I tell you, this period that he went through, in a way, it could be the greatest thing for him to motivate him to really get back to what, you know, what the hell I'm supposed to be, man, and what an opportunity I have. So this could be a, a real positive thing. And another thing I wanted to mention, I look back at my notes about how difficult the job is when Jim got the job. I was, in, I've been a, I was a teacher for 25 years. When I first started teaching, all we saw was kids wearing Michigan stuff. Because they saw Michigan in the Rose Bowl back in the, the, the late 90s and the national championships, the early 2000s, Michigan, all the kids were wearing Michigan around our state. Maybe 10% were wearing, amazing, uh, were wearing green and white. When Lloyd got out and all that Rich Rod uh, chaos, as the years went on, our schools, you start seeing more green and white, and it flipped a 10, 15 year period it made it harder to recruit in this state. So again, this championship will have, it's starting the process. You're going to see more maize and blue in our state. It's, it's not, that championship is not a one year impact. It will have impact for many years down the line. Michigan is showing that, that, that they can be back and it's going to help in recruiting. But I just wanted to mention that again, the, you know, the challenges of the, of a generation of people in our state, in, in the Midwest, who haven't seen Michigan win. They don't know about, you know, they don't know about the the the, uh, the, the legacy that, you know, older guys like us uh, live through. Yeah, the word I was searching for earlier was uh, compartmentalized. For some reason, I wasn't able to say it. Yeah, I would, I, I would uh, you know, tell people this also, you know, like, uh, and how it's played out. Michigan, you know, in, in some areas are getting a lot of blowback and, you know, talking about, uh, you know, how horrible yesterday was and, you know, Michigan, you know, Harbaugh abandoning the program and all that. We went over that a little bit, but, you know, like here, if, you know, I would expect if you're a Michigan State fan, that's exactly how that you would portray it. Or if you were an Ohio State fan, actually, if you were on the outside and you weren't a Michigan fan or a Harbaugh fan, I can also understand why people would do that. I understand in the national media if somebody would look at this and say, oh my God, you know, what a jerk, you know, Jim Harbaugh for doing that. I think those, I don't know about saying he's a jerk, but, you know, being, a, I, I think, you know, criticizing him is fair. So, you know, in, in this particular situation, so don't, you know, be upset about that, Michigan fans. Uh, you know, you understand that if you're on the other side, you'd be doing the same thing. That's just part of the game. 
uh, in the end, you know, you're able to get the guy and he's coming back here and you know, Michigan's in a pretty good situation. And, you know, uh, there's some fans that I think that, you know, hedge their bet because look, it looked like he was gone over the last couple of days. So, you know, they start saying things and, you know, running their own mouths about, you know, and, and it, it's okay, you know, to come back. You don't have to sit there and, you know, hold a grudge on it. And Michigan's got a pretty good schedule next year, and they got pretty good offense, pretty good team coming back. They found the right defensive coordinator here. I think they can compete for the Big Ten, you know, and that's what we're talking about. You know, people say, well, what about down the line in a couple of years? Let's just, you know, let's stay focused on, uh, on next year right now. They're in a pretty good situation. And, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, they've got the right guy to get in there with the name, image, and likeness, and also with the academics, with the, the transfer portal, the overall recruiting, and being able to go out there. He put together a pretty good staff last year, uh, uh, you know, that was able to, you know, uh, help him, you know, finally get to that Big Ten championship. So you should feel pretty good uh, if you're a Michigan fan and understand that people are going to be coming after you a little bit. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, there could be a positive thing that comes from this, man. Jim's uh, re re rejuvenated optimism and, and total dedication that th th this is Michigan, this is where I'm going to be. And, um, you know, and, 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 yeah, there's going to be some outside people taking shots, but I guarantee you he, Jim's going to get back to focusing on the main thing, my assistant coaches and my players and everybody in Schenbeckler Hall, and they're going to get in that bunker – and they're going to focus and, and, and work toward building that next championship, man. And, uh, and uh, yeah, he's got one big decision coming up, and he's got this next coordinator. What do we got here? Harbor has to work with whatever recruits and try to find those diamonds in the rough. And, and those, yeah, I mean, guy, guy make, Evan, uh, Urban makes a good point. You know, listen, the, the last 15 years, the only way you beat Ohio State is you got to out-coach them. you got to out-coach them because they got the best recruits. They're getting the best kids for the last 15 years. If we win the Big Ten next year as well, better. You're, you're absolutely right, Irving. The momentum, man, it's momentum. You do it year after year. And then we start to chip away at their armor, man. We start to chip away where we can match them on recruits. And when the day comes, when 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 we can start, uh, if we the more we beat them on the field, the better we're going to do with recruiting. College football is the opposite of pro, man. The more you win in college, the better players you get. In pro football, the more you win, the worse players you get. You draft last. So college is different from, from that standpoint. But, yeah, we're I just think we're really rolling now, and he's got a huge decision to come up. And that's one of the most – That's I think that quality – I think the, the quality of evaluating assistant coaches for at any level is more important than the ability to evaluate a player. He's got to pick – Another, he's got to find another Mike McDonald. He might be on his staff, or he, maybe he knows a guy out there. But he he definitely wants to run the uh, the uh, you know the structure defensively of what we ran this last year. I guarantee that. And you know, then I was I, I, I also we should know this when he was at Stanford. Nick or uh, uh, Vic Fangio ran his defense, and and they were they were structurally very similar to what uh, very 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 similar to what we did this past year. So. Jim has run this stuff before. He's got to get the right guy. Where's Fangio at? Fangio just got fired uh, from the Denver uh, the Denver Broncos. He was the head coach. Right. Yeah, maybe he'll come back. You know, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers ran a 3-4 a defense. Larry Foote Jr., I, I know he could end up uh, following Byron Leftwich to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and that's what most people think, but you know, Larry Foote, who uh, played at Michigan and who also is a Detroit native. You now, sometimes guys want to come back home. He would look pretty good as uh, a defensive coordinator. He also has that uh, that Super Bowl ring uh, that I've seen. So, you know, having Larry Foote Jr. Uh, back as a D.C., that would be at the very top of my wish list. But, you know, combing through some of it, uh, Scar, I don't know if you have names or you're just talking about, you know, you know what you want to see in, 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 in the new – defensive coordinator, but there was a, a defensive backs coach uh, from the Ravens, uh, you know, for, I don't know, four or five years uh, that went on last year to Vanderbilt to be their defensive coordinator. And uh, his name is uh, Jesse Minter. Maybe yeah. that was somebody that could come back and, or would, would go from the DC at Vanderbilt to Michigan. You'd say, you know, that's not a lateral move. That's a, you know, more of a, 
you know, the, the academic uh, towards the bottom in the SEC to one of the teams that obviously that won the Big Ten. So you uh, would look at that as yeah, – I know that name, Danny Minter. It's amazing how these names uh, – I, I see these names and I know their dad. You know, <laughs> Rick Minter, his dad, was a really, really good football coach. He was the head coach at Cincinnati. He was one of the guys that really started building Cincinnati. But you mentioned Minter – Worked with the Ravens, knows the system. Maybe him and Clinksdale could be a great team. Mm. Let, let this mentor guy work the outside backer guys, the Hutchinson Ajabo position. You know, let uh, Elston work the inside guys. That would be a that's a nice transition because it's it's the Raven defense again. You know, hammered away at that. Larry Foot, that's a stud Michigan guy there, man, out of Pershing High School. Uh, the pride of Pershing High School on the east side, and what a player he was! He's got a couple big, a uh, couple championship rings. The guy's got a Big Ten championship rings. He's got uh, uh, as a player with uh, with the Steelers, and he's got one as a coach with the uh, oh yeah with the Buccaneers. So yeah, you, you, that guy going into a, a living room, you kidding me? With all that jewelry, I think he might have been a Michigan captain. Yeah, those are. And those are the, the the decisions Jim has to make, man. You know, those are tough, but uh, yeah, it, it, I definitely really, really want to see us, you know, continue this this structure defensively because it, it was a huge factor in our success. Yeah, I love Larry Foote Jr. That to me seems like it would be an absolute uh, a home run, but he might be, you know, heading to be a defensive coordinator with uh, with Jacksonville. So. Uh, I'm just looking through. I've, I've got the captain list here. Uh, he was in the early 2000s. I see uh, James Whitley and Eric Brackens. I, I don't see Larry Foote, Victor Hobson, Carl Diggs, uh, Marlon Jackson. So, yeah, I don't, I do, don't think that he was uh, a captain uh, there. All right, let's. Uh, we've got more things to get to. Uh, Irvin talking about uh, McCarthy being the starter. I, I know we got a lot of things to, that we will be talking about, um, you know, all the way through, you know, Michael saying, pay Jim. Uh, we do have that part that we'll see what he ends up getting. You know, there had uh, the ward manual who was uh, uh, roundly criticized uh, the last 72 hours uh, before last night about, you know, what are you doing here? Why don't, your job is to keep Jim Harbaugh here. And, you know, there was some talk that, you know, he was, uh, I don't know, low balling and other incentive laden, you know, type contract. And, and, you know, that was freaking people out, but uh, you know, Ward Manuel uh, has uh, been able to get through this and, you know, he's come out looking pretty good. Got a thought on that? Yeah. I, I wish we could have, saw, I wish we could see the offers, you know, I wish we could see, <laughs> uh, I, I wish we could see the math and, and, and has it changed in the last 48 hours. You know, I, I wish we could see is the is the is the university going to take a different stance on transfers? Michigan State just brought a, a top kid in from Illinois, big tight end. He was their best football player. You know, could Michigan have brought that kid in? Good question, Scar. Let me ask you. Uh, I don't know. So I don't know. Well, I, I want to ask you. You went to Michigan, so uh, there, there's a lot of uh, Michigan alums that I talk with when it comes down to the academics. You know, they they. They seem to have strong feelings when it comes down uh, about it. Uh, would you like to lighten up the uh, the uh, transfer credits that would allow Michigan to be able to hit the transfer portal with more ease for the football program? But it might affect their overall standing in that U.S. Uh, world and news report, you know, that always has Michigan, you know, this year in the top three as, uh, you know, the, uh, the third best public uh, institution in the country. You know, if that ends up dropping them down a little bit, would you be in favor of doing that? Well, I, you know, I, I haven't thought about, uh, you know, how that might affect ratings. Um, yeah, I, I uh, it, it, it's a, those are tough questions. Listen, right. those are, those, listen, in recruiting Michigan's great academics for for 20% of the kids, it helps us. It helps us when we're recruiting the, all these kids around the country. For 20% of the kids, it probably hurts us. Because we can't get them in, or you know, it, it, we, that that can be an issue for maybe twenty percent, sixty percent. It's probably irrelevant because they can come in and, and and you know they're gonna make, they're gonna go to whatever you know they, they they got a lot of options to go to any type of schools and and, and maybe academics at, at at Michigan State or Purdue. It's all the same to them. 
but you know, some guys really want that great or something different that Michigan offers. So as, as far as that argument, it helps you for the really highly motivated academic kid. It hurts you with guys that, uh, you know, you know, maybe Alabama or LSU can't get them in. And, and I firmly believe that's why Brian Kelly went to LSU. Danny, that's off the topic. That's what I believe. I think he went. Well, it's not really, it's not really off the topic because Notre Dame, you know, uh, the whatever it comes down, people with academic standards and everything else, and, and where the the playing field is, I think it is easier to get, uh, you know, from my understanding, to get people into LSU than it would be uh, to Notre Dame. And that twenty twenty sixty model that you put out there, I don't know if it now uh, puts into play the uh, the transfer credits uh, with players in the transfer portal. You know, maybe that uh, twenty twenty sixty is not like that anymore because. Uh, you know, Michigan, uh, you know, has this uh, this hurdle when it comes to transferring credits in. I don't know. You know, I don't want to get too upstream with that. Let's get to the recruiting spotlight. Uh, we can come back. We've got more to get to, including some basketball, uh, the memorabilia minute. And, of course, we can talk more uh, and read your feedback here when it comes down to, to Jim Harbaugh. A uh, National Signing Day, oh, by the way, was yesterday. And, uh, uh, you know, Michigan is still in – on this uh, five-star defensive tackle from Seattle. And, you know, he's uh, down to six schools. And what he had to say here, Scar, let's see if you can see this here. Uh, Josh Connerly Jr., he put out this tweet uh, recently here, uh, the day before signing day, as you can see the stamp on there from uh, January 31st. Not committed anywhere, and I won't be signing February 2nd. So he wasn't signing yesterday. See y'all in March with a big smiley face. Now, <laughs> you know, this was the one, you know, that Michigan was still in on. If Connor Lee Jr. yesterday made the decision, let's say, to, you know, to go to Washington and Michigan fans would say, you know what? Uh, Harbaugh's dalliance there with the Vikings and hurt him because they could have got Connor Lee Jr. Well, in, in this case, that's not true. Yeah. Hey, that kid is, is luckily he hung on. He's not ready, but we didn't miss out on a big defensive end. And the line, I think the linebacker running back kid went to Georgia, right? We're we're in on two other guys, I, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, well, Devontae Henry went to Oklahoma. I don't know if he was ever – he was committed, but, you know, he was looking elsewhere. It sounded like, you know, that, uh, you know, he was gone no matter what, you know, if Harbaugh yeah, stayed around. Look, there's no question there's a downside, uh, you know, to what happened yesterday. It's it, it can have a residual effect, but listen, we just, we just win – and, and love our players up, get them in the pros and graduate them. Our, our graduation rates are one of the best in the country. But, uh, yeah, the Connerly kid is definitely a big-time kid. Uh, he, he's going to wait. I don't know what he's waiting on. Uh, maybe uh, maybe the, 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 uh, the nil offers are starting to stack up and he's, <laughs> he's playing them against each other. We don't know. We don't know what kind of phone, call he, phone calls he's getting. But it's good that he hung on. Because uh, Michigan still has a chance with him, and uh, I, I guess that's uh, I know the kid from Dexter. Is he? Uh, he was supposed to say something pretty soon, right, Denny? Yeah, he's for next year. He's making an announcement this Saturday down at uh, Dexter High School. Uh, Cole Cabana, the uh, the super speedster uh, running back. So, and it, it sounds like at least uh, I saw Zach Libby put in a forecast. He is our recruiting editor here for the Maize and Blue Review. He put in a forecast for Michigan. Uh, here's the, the the rankings from rivals here. After the smoke cleared from yesterday, Texas A&M, Jimbo Fisher said, I ah, don't believe what they're saying on those message boards about the name, image, and likeness. That's my uh, Jimbo Fisher. Nick Saban was talking about, he didn't like the name, image, and likeness. Teams buying players right now. We've never bought any players. Uh, you know, I didn't see if Kirby Smart or Ryan Day had anything to say. Three and four, Texas with a good recruiting class there. Uh, Notre Dame, Penn State, James Franklin hauling in a, uh, a top seven class. Oklahoma being able to do it with Brett Venables. There's Michigan, number nine. Yeah, right. how, about, how about Texas, Denny? 50 grand a year for every offensive lineman. 50 wow. grand. You heard about that, right? Well, no, I didn't. No. Nope. Yeah, that, that's the deal they got. You go there's a there's a big uh, a big alum. Uh, I think he played offensive line there, and he every kid that plays offensive line is getting fifty grand a year. Um, yeah, Nick Saban's a, you know he, you're a joke talking about. It. Yeah, of course, of course he wants to keep it like it is. Anytime you're monopolizing a system, good point. 
based on the rules that you've been dominating on for the last 10 years. Yeah, you don't want no changes. Of course he doesn't want any changes. He's not happy what's going on with Jimbo over there and all them Texas A&M alums stepping up, Annie and up. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I see where we're at. It's definitely uh, – we, we brought some good athletes in. That's a, that's a good number. You know, we're right there, man. We got to – you know, the, the, there's a slight difference with Mich- with Ohio State's talent, a few more four- and five-stars kids. But, hey, we got to coach them up, man. We got to do what we did this past year. You got to out-coach them because right now Ohio State's there. And until they start having some bad luck, we, 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 we've talked about it. The, the, the first step is firing coaches. They did that. They got new defensive coordinators. So we beat them again. Maybe they'll fire some more guys. And pretty soon, maybe they'll look to fire Ryan Day. Then we're really making progress, Danny. Then we then we start to get Michigan up to uh, two, three in the country and get Ohio State down and get these other people down. But it, you got to beat them on the field, and you got to you got to beat them on the field with the nil, with the recruiting, everything. You got to. So it's a it's a the battle is hitting from a lot of fronts. Yeah, no question. It, and it's, uh, you know, now it's land, sea, and air with the name, image, and likeness and the transfer <laughs> portal and everything else. That's what it is, baby. <laughs> There's uh, Indiana surprising, you know, put together uh, Coach Allen there, a top 15 class. Just looking for some of the other Big Ten teams. And there's uh, Michigan State at 22, Mel Tucker. And I know a lot of Michigan State fans, they're also saying, you know what? You need to start blending in the transfer portal with signing day, because look where it would be then, because we get a lot of four star guys that we're bringing in uh, with the transfer portal. And I think they got a point there, you know, state and Mel Tucker, you know, Spartans, that's a pretty good class, um, you know, for Mel Tucker there in his third year, Iowa, 28, uh, Purdue, 32, Maryland sitting there at 35, Illinois, Nebraska, uh, Rutgers down at 43. But- yeah, I, I, I think right now they do a, a recruiting ranking for high school kids, and they also do a ranking for transfers, right? They're, we have two separate rankings. There you um, go. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's good that they're separate. Um, I like to, again, I like to see if I was a high school coach, I want to see how many they're signing. And, uh, yeah, but Michigan State's done well with it. But I, I'm wondering, you know, they got 500 bucks a crack every month for every football player. That's what the, 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 the rich guys donating. That, that's a factor in recruiting. And I'm wondering what they gave that tight end. This kid left Illinois? Really? You're, you're the best player at Illinois with, the, you know, Brett Bielema getting things going, and you're going to pack up and go to, uh, go to East Lansing? What, did, what, what, what happened in that phone call? You know, how'd that play out? Let's uh, let's PayPal you over. I mean, it's legal to do now. Whatever yeah. you want, we got, we we got it right here. Whatever you need, you know, you want a bag of cash, you want whatever. <laughs> Michigan did. I mean, it's legal to do now. So I mean, I, I'm not laughing about it. Good job. You know, if you're able. I know, to- and, you know, Danny, we're you, you know we're talking about, but that, that's what I'm wondering. That's what I'm wondering. Wh- how big an issue? The, what we're talking about. I wish Ward and Jim would let us give us an idea of where the heck Michigan is with with this, and how are our coaches, uh, are our guys going into them living rooms with uh, with with wallets loaded, or are we empty? I want to have what I want to have what the enemy has. Well, you got to be careful to coming out and saying, "Yeah, you know, we'll meet everybody's price." You notice that Jimbo Fisher was out there playing it down, but you know what? I think Texas A and M you know, was paying their guys a premium price. I mean, I think that's why they did end up in large part getting that class, but it's not like you can come out and say, Oh yeah, man, we're sitting around 20, 30 million. That's how we're getting our class because you know what? There'd be some guys that are already on that team that are going to be saying, Hey, where's ours. And you know, Michigan did get, uh, you know, the center, one of the, he was a a finalist for the Rimlington uh, given to the top center. I think I said that right. Uh, Award there, Aluskan Oluwatimi. You know who's going to slide over there? You would think and be the uh, the center next year for Michigan. So you know that's huge, considering uh, how well that offensive line played last year for U of M, and taking over for Andrew Vastardis. Then they're just talking about all right, who's going to be their right tackle? You know, is it going to be Carson Barnhart? Is it uh, you know Trent Day Jones? You know who you saw a little bit there. Uh, you know that offensive line looks pretty good. I mean, we start just talking about the personnel and uh, the units here. Uh, that's a good place to start is up front. Michigan. Oh, Danny, man. Look, look, that, that offense, 
you got one question mark, right tackle. You got everybody back. You know who your quarterbacks are. You know your running backs. You know your receivers. You got your tight ends. You got, I mean, it's just I, this is one of the years. If I'm coaching at Michigan, this is one of the years I want to open up with Texas. I want to open up with Oklahoma. I want those. I don't want to play Connecticut in game one or Hawaii. I want to play those guys because I got a returning quarterback. I got a returning offensive line. You know, it, I wish we had a, 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 one of them big dogs this year in a non-conference slate. Uh, Colorado State's not going to do it. That's who they got on September the 3rd. You're right. Hawaii and Yukon. Yeah. You know, that, that you want when you got the returning quarterback and a lot of, you know, a good chunk of returners, that's when you want to play, you know, the Texas game one or two or Oklahoma, you know, because that's when you can uh, you, you can have an advantage. Yeah, I know those games are still on the schedule in the future. I'll be surprised if they're able to keep them after the the moves by those teams to the uh, to the SEC. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm, I've been watching Texas's recruiting. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching it real close because because we could see that kid that left for Ohio from Ohio State, and we can see all these kids that they're recruiting now. They had a real good recruiting class, and and those are the guys we're going to see. And I think we get them in like two or th- like three years or something like that. Good job. Uh, Scar, two more things that we have here. One, uh, Michigan's playing a basketball game coming up on Saturday, and they're taking on Purdue. I watched Purdue go into Minnesota last night, and uh, they they destroyed the Gophers. Man, they look good. They look good everywhere. They, got, uh, they can rebound. They can score. They can shoot. And Michigan's going to have their uh, their hands full. You know, they've got a, a future pro and, and Jaden Ivey, and then they got two guys in the middle there. Uh, Michigan's going to have their hands full coming up uh, Saturday afternoon in West Lafayette. Yeah, they got everything. That's that's the last team in the Big Ten I would want to play. They got everything. They got size. They got shooters. They got defense. Smart coach. Depth. I mean, they bring the the kid, the big kid off the bench. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Travion Williams. Yeah, they bring that kid off the bench. You know, yeah. and they just that's that is the best team in the Big Ten. Uh, Michigan is going to have to shoot the ball like they did at Indiana, uh, you know, like they did against the Brad. You know, we, we're capable of doing that, uh, but uh, you know, we and we've won there. We we played there and, and won there and shot the ball well there. We've got good players. Uh, we can match up with them, but you know, we got to make shots, man. We can't go like we did to East Lansing last week and um, you know and, and make shots and play one half. You got to be. You know, keep them on the floor, Juwan. Like I said, forget going in the locker room. <laughs> we went in the locker room. We came out a different team, man. Yeah, well, if it doesn't work out this weekend, I think I'm going to send that note over to Juwan. Yeah, play the first 16 minutes. Play the whole game Saturday like that. Huh. Michigan will have a shot. And you know what? They're looking for resume builders. Their resume is thin. This would be a signature win. So, uh, you know, the way I break it down with 11 games to go is, you know, they can only have four losses. I think they're going to go 7-4. to four. I put this down as one of the – likely losses so they change this or they they win this game then it changes the perception and their outlook for the ncaa tournament i would say right now if somebody asked me that they're probably not uh, going to make it but um go out and win on saturday and that can change things around they'll change things around just like that they win saturday i'm gonna feel like uh you know what yeah i, I feel like they've got a shot now uh to you know i'll put them on the bubble and and i'll that that will change my answer to whether or not I think they're going to get in. But right now I say no. Win on Saturday, I'll say uh, – I'll turn it over to yes. You know, the, the Michigan team and the coaches and the players, they, they've got to feel that they can go there and win. I and mean, if you can go into uh, Indiana and win by 20, there's no reason you don't have the confidence and know that you have the talent uh, to go in there and win. They, they, they just got to do it. They got to play their, you know, a, their best game like they – like they're capable of doing, play smart. Uh, the, the coaches are, 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 I think the coaches are doing a good job with uh, developing these young kids. Hopefully they're all back. But, you know, we can go there and win, and that would be a huge win, man. That would be huge, you know, beating a team like that on the road. All right, Scar, it's time for the memorabilia minute. And uh, I have something if you don't. You know, I don't actually have a uh, item, but I, I'm going to just tell a quick story because it's so uh, reminiscent about what we just went through, what our players were going through. I remember, uh, if, I, I may have talked about this before, but I remember after my freshman year, 
It was right around this time. And uh, Texas A&M was throwing a, a, a boatload of money at Coach Schembechler. And I, I just remember the, 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 uh, the, the feeling as a player, you know, and, and, and all the people involved with it. But I, I, it, 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 and then years later, you know, I worked with Coach Bo. And I, I, but years later, he explained, and I always use this line. And I, when I talk to people about, you know, how, why is it so important to make a lot of money or having peace of mind? And Bo used to say, you can only eat so much steak. You can only eat so much steak. So he, he understood how many people would lose their job, you know, even though, yeah, you, you get, you're getting a big paycheck going to Texas A&M, but there's a lot of guys, a lot of people in Ann Arbor, you might not bring them all and they might get, they might not get picked up by the next coach. So his 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 mentality, I believe, had an impact on Jim Harbaugh. And 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 maybe he was getting those text messages, and I, I from some of those players, some of those parents of those players, and um, you know maybe that was a factor. You know we've heard the narrative that they didn't offer. We don't know. We don't know the truth, but I know that. Uh, uh, he's our he's back. He's our coach, and there's a lot of happy kids, uh, current players. And there's a lot of happy old guys like me that we got our guy that built our program back, and he's back. And um, I just wanted to share that story. I like it, Scar. Finally, I guess you're going to have to answer one of these questions because it's directed right at you, and uh, there it is on the screen. Whose picture is that on Scar's door? <laughs> Well, you See, that's, Danny, that's that, that that's the reason we do our show to give the truth, to give wisdom, to give knowledge. We're not just talking ignorance. That's Paul Feinbaum. That's just a lot of noise. That's just a lot of ignorance. He's still there. He's our motivation to give the football world wisdom and knowledge from the the great pride of of Dexter, uh, Dennis Fithian, and Old Scar. So yeah, that's that that's. Uh, Paul Feinbaum, Feinbog, whatever his name is, the uh, the water carrier for the SEC. Yeah, he was ripping Harbaugh today. All right, Scar, uh, great job. <laughs> what are we going to see you next? I'll be ready after that Michigan victory Saturday. All right, we'll talk with you then. All right, baby, go blue.